Hey there, Grumpy Old Fart here. <sighs> Wet my whistle a little bit before I before I get started. Okay, uh, I'm doing Starfleet Battles Tactics videos because I, Starfleet Battles is a wonderful game. It's hours and hours of enjoyment, and it makes you smarter to play. It increases your intelligence. The more you think, the smarter you get. Starfleet Battles makes you think. It is a wonderful game. It's fun. Hours of fun for you and your friends and your family. I highly recommend it. This is not a kid's game. This game is for people with intelligence. This game is for people who... <sighs> this game is, is not for the weak-minded. You can't just drive over and shoot people. You're going to lose every game. It's fun to play even if you lose, but... The point is to win, right? This is one of my rule books. Yeah, there's three. <laughs> yeah, this one is dealing with uh, sections A through M, and it's it uh, it talks about all the equipment that you can use and things like that. The one device that I have found that is the trickiest to use, it can be your best friend or your worst nightmare, is the cloaking device. The cloaking device is one of the most useful and trickiest pieces of equipment in the game. It is. It was developed by the Romulans and then later copied by Orion Pirates and others. Using this device is as tricky as it is working against it. If you use a cloaking device haphazardly or without careful consideration, you could literally kill your own ship. I suggest you read through the section on the cloaking device very, very thoroughly. Uh, the section in my book is G13, or, or G rather. Yeah, G13, excuse me, is the cloaking device. And rather than get bogged down in the minutia of the rules, because there's a lot of them, I'm going to talk about the most important aspects as I see them. The first step, uh, aspect is cloaking. The point of cloaking is to hide. That's the whole point. If you're not trying to hide, there's no reason to cloak. If you have no reason to cloak, don't do it. Because it's power costly and it's tr it's tricky to use. If you want to cloak and get away, that's fine. If you want to cloak and find a better way to attack, that's fine. If you want to cloak at the beginning of the game, that's what I normally do. But my point is, the point is to hide. G13.33 is a very important section. That's G13.33. Um, that deals with how to cloak and the procedure for cloaking with the fade-in period and the fade-out period and blah, blah, blah. G13.33 is a very important section. Read that section twice or more. Um, to hide, remember that speed is not your friend. Except to distance yourself from your opponent prior to activating the cloaking device. It, the idea there, the only reason speed is good is to get as far away from your opponent as possible before you activate the cloak. The reason being the closer you are, the easier it is for them to see you. If you're cloaked and they still know where you are and can get a lock on, the, the cloak is pointless. All it is is a waste of power. Okay, and, and you can't shoot back. So, you know. The three factors that will help you hide the most are slow speed, the slower the better, Range, you want to get as far as possible, and electronic countermeasures, the defensive electronic warfare. And, and you want to put as much in there as you can afford. If you can put six, the maximum, that's what you want to do. For an example, at range five, speed three, with no ECM shift, the chance of somebody retaining a lock onto you and being able to shoot at you effectively is one. So if they roll a D6 and get a one, they can still shoot at you. They've got lock on. The cloaking device doesn't make it look like you vanished. What it does is it hides you. They still know you're there. They still know generally where you are. But there's no... They, they don't have a lock on and firing weapons is at best problematic. So, detecting a cloaked ship is very, very hard. You want to get as close as possible. You want to use as much electronic counter countermeasures, the offensive electronic warfare as possible and you want to roll really good on a d6 that's about a, that, that, that's your chance right there i'm going to go through a, a, an example here say you're gonna you're running from somebody and you want to cloak 
you can and the best speed you got can get you range seven from them. So at range seven, the range factor shift is one. Okay, so what we do is we start with the, the sensor rating of their ship. If it hasn't been damaged, it's generally a six. Taking one off for the range factor is zero. Or is one, so it makes it a five. Electronic warfare. If if as you're cloaking, if you have between four and six, the shift is going to be two. But if he has electronic counter countermeasures, it'll negate some of that. So let's say you have six and he has three. That means in, in offensive. So you have six in defensive, he has three in offensive. That's going to be a shift of one. Now, you don't want to stay in one spot. You don't want to stay in the exact spot where you're cloaking. You want to be able to move at least a little bit. So say you're doing speed three. That will allow you a number of different hexes you could be in. They can't effectively plot where to transport transporter bombs or whatever. You want to be able to move a little bit. So now if you want to stay in the same hex as you're at while you cloak, speed zero will take two off of this. So it's effective. The problem is they know right where you are and they can transport a buttload of transporter bombs there and then you're screwed when you move, when you do move. So you want to be, be able to move a little bit. So say you want to move speed three. That's going to be a shift of zero. So we're still at four. Now the cloaking device, the effect of the cloaking device is to subtract four from that. So that's still zero. They have no chance to find you to, to retain lock on. That's pretty good. Okay. I was playing with my son the other day. He was running a hydrant and I wanted to get away from this guy. And I want to say he needed to roll a one or a two to retain lock on to me because I was I I had to, I, I was I was going too fast the previous turn to slow down to zero or one or four. So I was doing like speed six, I think. And the speed factor adjustment was one. And if it wasn't for that yeah, he, he had to roll a one is what it was. The little booger rolled a one and pounded the crap out of me and I couldn't do nothing about it. So, it you know, the cloaking device can be very useful. It can also be very tricky because while he's shooting at me, I couldn't shoot back because I was cloaked. Um, in the previous example, the one that I gave earlier, uh, range five, speed three with no electronic warfare shift, the chance was one. Okay, now, if... If there was an ECCM shift of two, so you didn't put anything in ECM, but he had six in ECCM, that's a shift of two in his favor. So that one becomes a three. He now has a 50-50 chance of retaining lock-on. See what I mean? It can be very, very tricky. And there's a formula here. It's on page 229 in my book. It's, I'm using the Doomsday Edition rules. Uh, Silver Anniversary Master Rulebook. Um, and there's a there's a formula you use, and all the stuff is there. All you gotta do is plug the numbers into the formula, depending on the situation, and it tells you the 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 chance, the probability of retaining lock on it listed as p in the in the thing. Uh, so, as a matter of fact, I can show that to you right quick. See, it's got it all there. And the idea being, you want to not let them have lock on to you. That's the whole point of cloaking. Um, once a cloaked ship decloaks, you want to stay as close as possible. If you're fighting a cloaked vessel and they decloak, you want to stay right on them. Uh, use as much ECCM as possible and pound him with whatever firepower you can. And I mean really pour it on. Uh, use staggered salvos after the initial alpha strike. The, the initial alpha strike drops the shield and does some damage. After that, use staggered salvos. The reason being, you eliminate more weapons and power, which will keep him from cloaking. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you want you want to kill any cloaked vessel as soon as possible. Uh, you want to keep note of the fade in, fade out period. There's a there's a point where he decloaks. There's five impulses that you can pound the crap out of him and he can't shoot back. Okay. Um, the fade out period is the same way. Once he activates the cloaking device, there's a, a five impulse fade out period. It's the same way. Um, and during that time, he's, he's, he's pretty vulnerable and you still have a pretty decent lock on. One last thing. Not all ships cloak 
well. There are some ships that are designed to be used with the cloaking device. The Warbird, the War Eagle's not bad, but the Warbird specifically, it cloaks for one. It has six impulse and one of its cloaks, so that's five more. You can only use one for movement, so you got four more to arm your plasma weapon or whatever, and you have six battery points. Now, that's the Warbird. The Warbird Plus, you get three extra APR and some phasers and like that, but the that old impulse drive Warbird is what the cloak was des originally designed for. So, it's a, it's a good ship. Barring the fact that this maximum speed is one, and, and you know, it's still a pretty good ship. Um, what you want to do is find find a ship that can cloak, maneuver, and arm weapons. Some ships require a bunch of power to cloak, while others require less. Um, the Romulan KR, for example, it's a Klingon ship modified to use Romulan weaponry. The Romulan KR has 30 warp, and it requires 20 points of power to cloak. It's not a very effective cloaking device. It works, but again, you know, it's iffy. Um, what I do when I'm running that ship is because I have multiple plasma weapons to arm, I'll stay cloaked and try to time it so that on the third turn of arming of the plasma torpedoes, I can drop my cloak and divert that power directly to the, to the plasma weapons, and that way I've got him. I can fire and blah, 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 because trying to stay cloaked and arm weapons, and some of these Romulan ships, the power curve isn't real good, I'm just saying. If you are, if, if the ship you're running cloaks for an expensive power cost, you may want to consider using it initially to gain a decisive strike and then refrain from using it. Uh, if you put power into a cloaking device and they still retain lock-on, the cloak is useless and it's wasting power. If the cloaking device takes a lot of power, that's a lot of power wasted. Okay, I'm just saying. So read through the section carefully on cloaking devices, and if you get a chance to try them out, do so. Uh, there's different ways that the game allows you to do cloaking devices, one where you're still on the board, one with hidden movement. The hidden movement one is the one we use, and you have to be very, very careful because you gotta be precise as to what hex you're moving into, the facing, the whole nine yards. Uh, and you have to be able to account for every hex that you moved. The reason may, and, and if you're using hidden movement, you generally have to have another player who's not playing, who can who knows where you are, and knows where the your enemy has dropped their mines and transporter bombs. That's the only way it can be fair. Hidden movement, I found, works much better, but again, you have to have that neutral referee running the impulse charts. Okay. That way he can tell where the mines are and blah, 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 blah. Now, that being said, uh, if you're not, if it's just two people playing, like my, my son and I, I'm not going to cheat my son. So, you know, he tells me where he transports and stuff to, and if if I hit it, I hit it, you know. Um, and I I plot, the, the way I do that is I plot ahead how far I'm going, and he, he if, if I'm, and I... I move to this hex, then that hex, then that hex, and I turn to move to that hex, and that hex, and that hex. That's how that's how I plot my movement. If at any point he transport mines or, or transporter bombs to one of those hexes that I'm in, if I'm still in that hex, I get zotted. Okay. A lot of players will have to do that if it's a small game with just two players. If you're having a big game with a lot of players, you're going to need that neutral referee. That's all I'm saying. So anyway, I hope this I hope this finds everybody well, and I hope you enjoy playing Starfleet Battles. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all.